If you work with dynamic data, you're going to come across situations where you have no idea how many times a user may need to add similar information into a single post. So for example, when adding nutritional information to a recipe, there could be a handful of values or tens of entries. Now this is where a meta field like the repeater can be incredibly useful. It allows you to simply set up a template for the information to be entered, and then it can be used over and over again on the same post. Sound complicated? Well, it needn't be. In this introduction video, I'm going to show you how Jet Engine from Crocoblock makes it very straightforward to do. I'll show you how to add your own repeater fields to your custom post type, how to design the template to output the repeater, and then how to use that in your single post templates. Now, a quick point to cover first though, this is part of a larger tutorial that I'll be releasing very shortly covering the entire build of a dynamic website with Elementor Pro, Jet Engine, and Jet Smart filters. If you'd like to see how to build more feature-packed WordPress websites, then you may want to hit that subscribe button to be notified when the new video is released. Okay, so let's take a quick look now at the final version of the page with our repeater inserted, and then we'll see how to replicate this for ourselves. So the practical example of what we're gonna do is this nutritional information in the top right-hand corner. You can see for this particular recipe, there's just one set of values inside there, fats at 45 milligrams and 10% of your daily allowance. However, if we come back out of this and we go and take a look at a different one, for example, this vodka pasta, you can see there's two different entries inside you, sodium, trans fat, different values. And if we come back out one more time and we take a look at this five bean salad, for example, you can see there are different values inside there. So this is what we're gonna look at creating. Now this is a really simple example, but the fundamental skills that you learn allow you to get as creative as you want to with this and use it in so many different ways. So this is our template. And as you can see in the top corner, there's our nutritional information. So we're ready, we've got everything laid out. We just need to build the whole nutritional repeater region setup. So this is pretty straightforward when you come to working with Jet Engine. So we're gonna go back into the dashboard and I'm already inside the custom post type list, which is under Jet Engine in the bottom left hand corner. And you can see there's our custom post type, which in this example is recipe. So we're gonna open this up. If we take a look at the meta fields, everything is inside there except for the repeater region, which is what we need to insert now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, add a new meta field. We're gonna give this a label of nutrition. The name ID will automatically be created for us. Object type, you can see we can choose between various different things inside there, but what we want to kind of focus on is the field type, and we're going to come down until we find repeater. So once we do that, we now get the new repeater field section. Now, the easiest way to consider repeater fields is when you set up a repeater field like we've just done, you then get to embed a collection of normal meta fields inside that repeater field area. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. We come into new repeater field, and bear in mind this is inside that sort of encasement of our repeater field for nutrition. We click inside there and we get what we're kind of used to, the label, the name, and the type. So we're gonna call this label, first of all, type. You can see that automatically fills out the name and text is perfectly fine. We'll add a second repeater region, and this one is going to be called value. And a final third repeater region, which we're going to call percentage of allowance. Again, that'll automatically set that section, and we can set this to number if we want to, which would probably make a lot more sense, so let's just do that. We'll set that to be a numeric value. And you can see we can set up any minimum maximum value. So we're gonna set a minimum value in here for zero and a maximum value of 100. We're not gonna worry about a step value. So that's now made up the three fields that we need for our nutritional information. If you wanna set anything else inside here, like a description, field width, and if we wanna make this conditional, we could do just that. But we're gonna leave it as it is, and just hit update post type. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back out into our custom post type, which in this example, like I say, is recipes. We're gonna open up the recipe option and open an existing recipe, scroll down to where our custom fields are, and you see at the bottom now we have nutrition. So we can start adding items inside here. So we click add item. You can see that now gives us those three custom fields we just set up inside our repeater for nutrition. So let's just add an entry in. So we'll say sodium, and we'll put the value and we're gonna just say 34 milligrams and we'll say your daily allowance, that's 10% of your daily allowance. If you wanna add another one in, we can do just that. So we can just put something else inside here. So we can say fats, value, and we'll just say 400 milligrams and we'll say that's 25 percent of our daily allowance. So you can keep on adding as many of these as you want to into this recipe or whatever kind of post type you're creating. 
This is where the power of this comes in. If you don't know how many values you need to insert, you can just keep on adding and adding and adding as you need to as you go along. So we're going to update this and now we've added some information, but we've got no way of displaying this. If we come back into our listings and we'll just refresh this, then nothing's going to show up inside there because we haven't set anything up to display it. So the next thing we're going to do is take advantage of another one of Jet Engine's really easy ways of working. We're going to come back into Jet Engine, and we're going to do this time is we're going to create a listing. So we're going to open up listing, and we're just going to put inside here, add new. We're going to say this is going to be a repeater field as opposed to a post. And when we do that, we now get a lot of extra options. So the first of all is from post type. Well, we need to set that to be recipe, repeater source. Are we using Jet Engine, Jet Engine options, or are we using ACF? Well, we're using Jet Engine in this example. So the next thing we need to do now is know the name of the field, which we named Nutrition. So we'll just pop the name of that custom field inside there, Nutrition. Now, if you're unsure what this is, you can simply head back over into your meta fields. And inside there, if we scroll down, see our meta fields, there's Nutrition. And as you can see, if we open this up, the name or ID is nutrition. So we've got the right information. We don't need to set anything in the repeater options. And then we're going to give this a name. So we're just going to call this nutrition repeater template. And Elementor is what we're using. But if you were using Gutenberg blocks, you could use that inside here as well. So we'll say create our listing item. And that creates what would normally be like a typical listing. But we can now reference and use the repeater data inside here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a really simple layout. Two columns. Left-hand side is going to have the actual source, the type of nutrition we're talking about. The right-hand side is going to have the percentage of our daily allowance. So let's just do that. Let's just choose the two-column layout. And there we go. And we're just going to just do a little bit of tweaking on here now as well. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to have no column gap on there. And we're going to set the vertical line to be middle. Okay, so now we've got everything we need. We can start dropping in the dynamic data. Come back over to our widgets, and we're going to scroll down until we get to the listing elements, which are part of Jet Engine. From there, we're going to drag in a dynamic field. Drop that, as we'd expect, and you can see the source is set to post term, etc., and it's trying to pull in the title. Well, in this example, it's incorrect. So what we need to do is change that, and we're going to choose the option for repeater field. Once we've done that, it says, what's the name of the field from the repeater keys do you want to use? Let's head back over now to our layout, and you can see, if we open this up, We've got name of type, value, and percentage of allowance. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to copy this, and we're just going to grab that information from there, which is type for the first of our repeater fields, and we're going to drop that into here. So we're just going to paste that in, and you can see that now pulls in the value. So there's the first part of it done. If you want to change anything else on here, you want to change the HTML tag that's being used for a div, a heading, paragraph, span, and so on, you can do that inside here if you want to. You can set fallback values, hide it if it's empty, quite a few different things. But because it's a repeater region, generally you're not going to need to worry too much about any of these options right now. So there's the first one. We're going to make our lives easy. We're going to select this and we're going to duplicate it. And we're just going to change the value inside here from type. And we're going to change that to the second option, which is, in this example, value. So we'll copy that from there. Head back over and we'll just change this from type. And we'll just paste in value. And you can see there's our 45 milligrams. We'll do this one more time. We're going to duplicate this and we're going to drag it over onto the right hand section, select it, and we're going to come over and we're going to change this value. So, just so we don't make any mistakes, I'm going to open this third and final one up. We're going to copy the name of this like we've done before, copy that, head back over to our previous section, and inside there, we're going to change this and drop in percentage of allowance. And you can see that's now put everything inside, but it doesn't really look very good. So we can tidy things up now and get it to look the way that we want. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that the two values in our first section actually sit side by side. And the easiest way to do that is to select the first value, come over to the left hand side under advanced, and we're going to scroll down until we get to positioning. We're going to change the width and we're going to set this to be in line. Once we do that, you'll see that now shrinks it down and gives us a much smaller footprint for that. However, the 45 milligrams still isn't sitting where it needs to go, so we need to do exactly the same on there. I'm going to select that, I'm going to come over to Advanced, and we're going to scroll down again to Positioning. We're going to set this to be in line, and now they sit right next to each other. Compensate for that little bit of lack of spacing. We'll just come back to Advanced underneath the second value, and we're just going to come into the padding, uncheck, 
the linking and we're going to set the left hand side of this to something like five pixels and there we go we now get a little bit of space inside there on the right hand side we're going to select this and we want the value to go over to the right hand side and the easiest way to do that we come into style we can just set the widget item alignment to be end and you can see that now pushes that over to the right hand side so all the values and everything are in place and if we want to style these to get everything consistent we can do that as normal with elemental however for now i'm going to leave that as it is i'm going to do one thing though I'm going to select this first column and we're going to come into style and inside there we're going to come to the border option we're going to set a border type of dotted we're going to set a value of one pixel at the bottom and we're just going to make this a really really pale gray color so we're going to choose our text color and we're going to just drop this down until it becomes pretty semi-transparent to make lives easy we're going to just copy this and then we're going to come to the right hand side and we're going to simply just do the same kind of thing on here. We're going to right click though, and we're going to say paste style. And that now puts the underlined style inside there. So it allows these repeating regions to just stack on top of each other and give us a nice little line separator, just so everything looks nice and neat and tidy. Okay, so that's that section done. We'll update or save this particular template, and we are done with our listing. So we can head back out of our dashboard. And we're going to do now is going to go back into our template for our actual individual recipe. So we're going to come into our theme builder, we're going to come into single post, and inside there is our single recipe template. Edit that with Elemental. And now in the top right hand corner, you can see we're ready to drop in the information that we want we just created. So now to add the nutritional information in is incredibly easy. We just need to scroll down again until we find those listing elements, and we're going to grab the listing grid option. I'm going to drag and drop that up into our layout. And you can see that says, please select the listing to show. We're going to just choose that and we're going to come in and type in repeater. There's our nutrition repeater template and there's our layout. Now, obviously, it doesn't look right at the moment. So we need to change the number of columns from three in this example to one. And there's our nutritional information. If we want to make any changes to the spacing and things, we can do that. So we can say, well, this section needs to go up a little bit. So we'll pop into advanced. And we'll uncheck those linking options and we'll set this to something like minus 20. See if that closes up a little bit. That looks a bit better. And we'll just update this template. Now we've got our nutritional information placed inside you in a repeater region, styled and set up all through the normal, easy way of working with these listing options, and then inserted directly into the page for us. So it's really, really easy to work with. Now you might be asking yourself, why are we using the listing options when we're dealing with a repeater region, especially when we have an option called dynamic repeater? Well, the simple fact is that when you're working with layouts like this, it's easier to do it visually with a tool like Elementor and using the listing functions where you can still output this data than using the dynamic repeater option. So let me just show you, I'm gonna drag and drop this in and you can see now this gives us a different set of options. And if you want more control over this on a sort of HTML level, then this might be the best option for you. For me, I tend to prefer using the method I've just shown you. However, how does this work? So the content is, we've got to select the source as always, so it's going to choose the nutrition option. And you can see that now just changes it to name name, which is one of the macros that you can use as part of Jet Engine. However, like I say, I don't find this to be as user-friendly or as flexible as working with the method I've just shown you. However, if you want full control over things, this might be useful for you. So let me just show you where you can see we've got this little sort of name inside these percentage marks. That's a macro, something you can use as part of Jet Engine. Now, if you've been using Jet Engine for a little while, you may be accustomed to working with these. So what we can do is you can see it says there's the name. So we can come back over and there's our names as we've seen before. So that's the name of the actual repeater. But what we want are the name of the repeater fields themselves. So if we open this up, type is the option inside there. So if we just head back over and just put in type inside those little marks. So we'll say type. You can see that now shows us over on the right hand side all the values that are output from there. We change that from type to value you can see that will show us the values. So you can use this to build up however you want to display things, and then you can wrap them inside their own dedicated HTML tags. So you might want to put this into a table, but what you can do is you can just put the table rows and the table cell values inside you and use those macros to build things up. And then you can enclose that in the table fields you can open and close at the bottom. Now, for me, like I say, this isn't the method I would generally tend to use. However, it's there should you need it. Like I say, I think the visual way is a much easier way to work. So we're going to undo that. We're going to hit update on our template file, and we're going to take a quick look now at this in action. So let's take a look at refreshing this page. 
and we now have some nutritional information. Let's come back out and take a look at a different recipe. So for example, we'll try this five minute magic green sauce or we'll try the vodka option and you can see there's the additional nutrition information. So it's really easy to do. You can use this for a multitude of different reasons. And like I say, this is part of a much bigger video where I'll be showing you how to build this entire website, every single feature inside you, all the styling, everything. So if you want to be kept up to date, make sure you are subscribed to the channel to be checking that out as soon as it's released. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to building sites using Jet Engine from Crocoblock. And if you want to learn more, check out this dedicated playlist next. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below. And if you've made it this far into the video, well, why not give that thumbs up button a click? It really does help me out. Now, while you're at it, if you like this content, why not also click the subscribe button and slap the bell icon. But if you didn't get value from the video though, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice as that works pretty well too. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.